Hey guys, Chris from Glazo's Barbecue here. Today we're going to be reverse searing a bone-in ribeye on the Weber kettle. When reverse searing on the kettle, I like to set up a hot zone and a cold zone. In my hot zone, I'll use my char baskets and just lay down a couple of briquettes or some logs. I'll light my chimney using some lighter cubes. Probably let this preheat about 10 to 15 minutes while we prep our steak. When seasoning my ribeye, I usually don't use a binder like some people do, but I do like my seasonings. Today I'll be seasoning this ribeye with the Blackstone Steakhouse seasoning. You can keep it pretty simple. You can use salt, pepper, garlic, salt and pepper. It's really all your preference. Now, I don't go crazy and use a binder or anything. I just throw it right on. I like to pat it in. Make sure I get all sides. Even the fat. Now the reverse sear is one of my favorite cooking methods for a steak because while it's baking on the cold side, it's taking in all that flavor from the smoke. Then once it hits a few degrees before our target internal, we toss it directly over the coals and get a nice crust over the outside of our steak. Let your steak rest for about 15 minutes with your seasonings on it. Let those flavors sweat into the meat. Even better, if you have time the night before, season it up, throw it in the fridge uncovered, and let it dry brine all night. One of the most important parts when reverse searing any steak is to use a good thermometer. When inserting your probe, keep it away from the bone and try to get it as close to the center of the meat as possible. This will give you the most accurate reading. Now once your coals are ashed over, go ahead and dump them in your baskets. Toss on your grate. And then I'll be using this grill grate attachment to get a nice sear on my steak. I'm gonna be putting that over the coals so it can preheat while our steak cooks. Throw your steak right over onto the cold side and replace the lid with the top vent wide open, keeping the vent over the meat. Keeping the vent above your meat will make sure that the heat and the smoke drags up and over your meat. I'm keeping my kettle running at around 300 to 325 degrees. If you wanna add a probe onto the grill grate next to the meat too to make sure that you're hitting your temperature, that's okay. Leave the steak alone until an internal of around 90 degrees and we'll give it a flip. My steak has now reached an internal of 90. I'm gonna give it a flip. And we're going to leave this alone again until an internal of around 125 to 130 ish. Remember, replace your lid with the vents open above the meat. The steak has hit the target internal of 130. I'm going to take this from the cold side and throw it right over the coals, direct heat on the hot side. This is going to give us that nice flavorful crust. At this point, we can pull our probe out. We're not going to be needing it anymore. If you want to oil down your grates before giving it a sear, it's not a bad option. It'll help stop the meat from sticking to the grates themselves. Now there's a little trick to getting those grill marks. Take it and throw it right over the hot coals. Give it a little press, make sure it gets nice contact to those grill grates. Then pick it up and give it a quarter turn. Don't press it too hard that you squeeze all the juices out. We just wanna make sure we have full contact here. After another minute, flip it over and now you can see how beautiful that sear is. After flipping it for your last time, give it about a minute and a half on the grill. Then we'll pull this bad boy off and let it rest in a wire rack. This is super important. You want to let it rest for at least 10 minutes. Now, whenever you cook a steak, the rest is super important because it helps your meat retain those juices. This steak turned out phenomenal. I'm highly satisfied with everything from the smell to the grill marks. It's truly beautiful. You might find with your ribeye that the meat will kind of fall apart like this. You can combat that by wrapping it in butcher's twine. Now I don't really care, I'm gonna eat it anyways, but if it were for presentation reasons, it would be nice to wrap it up. But I'm gonna pick this up, just slice it right along the bone. Just make your slices. There we go. That turned out to be the perfect temperature. I was looking for a medium, medium rare, and I nailed it. Slice this the rest of the way down. You already know, I have to give this a try. Let's see how it turned out. That is delicious. You get the nice char from searing it over the coals, and the flavor of the seasoning is spot on. I 10 out of 10 highly recommend a reverse sear your steak on your Weber. You will not be disappointed. Mmm.